One of the big things you'll run into when you're making your own custom ROM and you're changing so much, uh, so many things are um, smart linked and then hard linked. And, and I don't know if smart linked is really a word, but if you bear with me, you'll understand what I mean. So here we have an error. And it says vendor useless ROM SDK API CM current.txt is needed to make this object, right? Well, when, uh, when we started, we were switching from Lineage OS to make our own custom ROM. We're calling it useless ROM. And uh, Lineage has a lot of holdovers from CyanogenMod. And one of those was the vendor folder of CM. And with that, there's also this CM SDK folder. So we changed the CM folder to useless ROM, and we've forked that in uh, in GitHub, and we've been making modifications to it, and that's really great. In there as well, throughout sprinkled throughout the the ROM source code is also tie-ins to go to the CM SDK. Now some of these tie-ins are um, verbatim. For instance, somebody in a device tree wrote, go to vendor CM SDK. And some of them are what I'm calling a smart link where it says go to the name of the vendor file, in this case useless ROM, um, but tack on the word or the letters SDK. Uh, so it's kind of a smart link. It's like whatever the name of it is, do that SDK. And so it's looking for useless ROM SDK. And that's what this error is. Now you might think an easy, quick thing to do would just be to, to take your CM SDK and make a link to it uh, that was in here and call the link useless ROM SDK. The problem that you run into is if you do that, is when you are starting the build, Android will, oh, excuse me, not Android, Make will look through the Android source files and make sure that it has everything it needs to make all the parts and pieces. And when it does that, <coughs> excuse me, it will look and it'll say, oh, there's this useless ROM SDK that's building this stuff and then there's this CM SDK that's building the same stuff and it's going to say hey I've got duplicate things building the same material I don't know which one to use so I'm just going to error out right now and you'll actually never get off the ground floor so you have really uh, we've come to a crossroads a point of decision you have to either fork the CM SDK, completely change it to useless ROM SDK, and then go through and fork each and every uh, useless ROM, uh, like for instance in the build folder where it links to those, um, and make sure that any devices that have specific hard links to it get changed. Um, this can be a really big, tedious task. That's part of making a custom ROM. Uh, that is probably the best way to go. All right, um, I'm no expert, but uh, but that's what I would recommend is the best way to go, especially if you're making your very own custom ROM. However, another option uh, is for if it's looking for things that are not a package, not something that's built, but just a file that it reads, you can do what I've done here. You can make this useless ROM SDK folder that it's looking for and make that API folder that it's looking for and then go to your CM SDK API and copy over these text files that it's trying to, to find. So it won't build anything new that needs to get built but it will have the files that you need. Um, why would you want to do this? Well that's a, that's a really great question. Um, the reason I would think that you would want to do something like this is you don't have to go through and fork quite as many things to change it for your own custom ROM. Um, although I, I do believe that would be better in the long run, uh, especially because you would be able to brand it better for your, your builds. Um, but one plus side to doing it this way is we're, we're doing this on Marshmallow, which is pretty old right now, and, and pretty much development for Marshmallow things have stopped. Um, but 
if you were doing this on let's say Pi which is new and being developed every day then if you forked their uh, their SDK or whatever the file would be um, they'd be continuously making updates to it and you would have to continuously merge their updates or hand jam their updates if there's a merge conflict whereas doing what I'm doing now we leave the CMSDK completely untouched and so that way any changes they make to the CMSDK automatically will get uh, added to our build when we do a repo sync and so that's kind of convenient uh, something worth thinking about um, it really comes down to uh, you know um, what's the best course of action for you in making a, a custom ROM so let's uh, we're going to continue with the build here and uh, hopefully we'll see some more good stuff that we can talk about